If you watch a lot of my videos, you may have noticed that recently my microphone changed. Up until maybe two or so weeks ago, I was running an AKG P120. This is by no means a bad microphone. In fact, this is a really great microphone as an entry-level XLR mic. It wasn't the mic that I originally intended to buy. At the time, I wanted an Audio-Technica AT2020, but they weren't in stock. So I got that instead, and... Even so, even if I got the mic that I wanted, it was only going to be a temporary solution. The mic we have now, even if you don't care at all about microphones, I guarantee you've seen this or you've at least heard this. This is the Shure SM7B. This is one of basically the two default microphones that everyone goes with. It is either this one or it is the Electro Voice RE20. That's not to say that there aren't better mics. There are far, far more expensive mics. You can spend $8,000 on a microphone if you really want to. The problem with that, though, is once you get to this level, the difference between, say, a $800 mic and a $2,000 mic is like a 1% or 2% improvement, and they're going to have a slightly different sound profile. And for some use cases, maybe that mic is going to be great. But I'm not using a properly sound-treated room. I'm just recording my bedroom. And for a use case like this, the Shure SM7B is basically as high-end as I would ever decide to go. So I'm going to be keeping this basically until it dies or I stop doing YouTube. When I plugged this mic in, my first impression wasn't actually good, but that was entirely my own fault. This is a notoriously hard mic to drive, and at the settings I had for the previous mic, you basically wouldn't be able to hear me. So if I turn down the gain to where it was, it was around here. Now, audio is being captured, and if you turn it way up, you probably can hear me. But it's certainly not usable like that. So both my gain and my input are set to max. Now... That works. It works fine on the Yamaha because my Yamaha MG10, very good interface, perfectly fine. On a cheaper interface, using the Shure SM7B is basically unusable. I could get extra gain out of it by just raising up the EQ and keeping everything level, but if I start trying to go to the limits of my mixer board, it's going to start producing some level of artifacting, and I want to avoid that. That's the same reason why I want to get away from 100% input, but if I lower it, you kind of struggle to hear me. I could address that in software, but what I've decided to do instead is go and buy a cloud lifter. They're also called like preamps or a bunch of other stuff like that. Basically what it's going to do is add an extra 25 decibels of gain into my audio chain, allowing me to lower it on the mixer board. I think it would take me around to maybe 50 or 60%, which gives me way, way more wiggle room. It's not required for my audio chain. My volume level is perfectly fine. It's just that I really do want to back off of that input. So hopefully that will maybe be like a 1% or 2% improvement. But like with the Shure, I will never need to actually replace the cloud lifter. That will be with me forever. Now, obviously, a mic is going to pick up more of the sound if it is closer to the sound source. But one thing you also see from a well-designed microphone is something known as the proximity effect. So this is basically where, as the mic gets closer to your voice, it's going to have a much more bassier sound. Now, this is by no means unique to the Shure SM7B. It's just that on this mic, it tends to sound really, really good. So if we talk from, say, back here... You don't really have much of a bassier sound, but from about here, even if I'm not trying to lower my voice, you'll notice that there's much, much more bass to the sound. If you have like a sub, you probably notice it's going or something like that. And specifically for this reason, Shure actually sends you two wind guards. So you get this one, this is a much thinner one. It works fine if you talk like slightly off axis and you don't, you know, make popping noise directly into the microphone, but What's really intended, if you're talking like this, is to use this version. This is considerably thicker. As we can see, much, much thicker. That is going to block a lot more of the, uh, the, the wind noises, the popping noises, and should produce a much better sound overall. Now, most of the time, I don't talk like this. I have a bit further away, and I don't really notice much of a difference at a distance like this. But... If I was doing something where I was talking like this all of the time, maybe I would have to consider swapping over to this one. Luckily, it's very easy to pop it off. You just, like, put a sharp thing in here and just come straight off. For example, like so. This is a comb. If you just, like, 
put there, boom, come straight off. That probably sounded horrible. I apologize for that. Never use the shore like this. Never, never run a naked shore. Always have one of the wing guards on it. Uh, they come for free. Just put it on there. You may have also noticed these little things on the back. So these are basically switches to control the sound profile. If you don't want to see them, there is a cover that does come in the box to actually go and hide that. Personally, I think it looks better with the switches actually being shown. So I leave everything in a flat profile and that's the way it comes out of the box. The reason why I do that is because if I want to EQ it, I'm going to EQ it on my mixer board. But if you want to do it on the mic, that can be done as well. So... We have one switch on here. You probably can't hear me too well, but probably well enough. So this switch here, this is going to introduce a bass roll-off. Basically, the bassier end of the sound is going to roll off. That's sort of what it does. Then the other switch is going to increase the high end of the sound, introducing something known as a presence boost. Whether you like the sound of this is really up to your personal opinion, how it's going to sound on your specific voice, Personally, I prefer it with being completely flat, and then as I said, if I want to deal with it later, I can go and deal with that with my EQ. If you don't have a mixer board though, you can always do EQ in software. I don't know of any plugins for OBS for Linux that will work, but if you're using Windows or Mac OS, go right ahead and actually go and do that. One of the really cool things about this mic, which might seem really minor, but I think really adds to its usability, is the way the cable is attached. So most microphones, as you might expect, you plug in at the bottom. The short, on the other hand, you, as you notice, there are switches at the bottom. So the way this is plugged in is actually right here. In the mount, there's actually a cable that runs over to the microphone, and that's where it's actually plugged in. It means I don't have to have a cable like sitting out here and then like running back and like running over my scene. It's basically hidden. Obviously you can notice it, but it's not like taking up a ton of the scene. In the same vein, a really nice change is this microphone records from the top. So both the AKG and also the Blue Yeti, they recorded from the front. If you ever see anyone using a Blue Yeti and recording like this, they are doing it wrong and their audio probably sounds horrible. Recording from the front is the only way it works. Now, that's not a major deal, but the reason why it's nice is because there is way, way less of my scene being taken up. It's just the entire microphone is in this tiny little circle, and I have all of this free room to just wave my arms around. Now, for some people, that might be a bad thing, but for me, because I'm not going to stop this, it's absolutely great. You may have also spotted less really weird shadows, and that's because the mic just doesn't take up as much space. So even if it's like directly in front of me like this, only on some angles can you really even notice a shadow. Before, if I had it anywhere near my face like this, it would be basically impossible to see me. Comparing this to the AKG is by no means a fair comparison, it's almost five times the price, but let's do it anyway. How much of a difference you can really tell is very much going to depend on the sort of audio gear you're actually using. I'm not using a great set of speakers, but one thing I've noticed is a lot of the, I guess, more loud sounds, the, the louder sounds of the word I'm trying to think of, tend to be a bit harsher with this microphone. And I have a tendency that when I get excited about something, I tend to yell about it. So avoiding those harsh sounds probably is for the best. And this microphone does also have a proximity effect as well, but I feel like those harsh aspects are sort of magnified, maybe like two or three fold, and it is certainly usable like this. I have recorded audio like this in the past. I just don't particularly like the sound. And maybe, look, maybe you couldn't actually justify this purchase for most people, but if I'm making as many videos as I do, I think that at some point, it just made sense to buy this microphone and move up from the AKG. Now, this mic is by no means cheap. In Australia, it's around $580. Some places try to price gouge it for like $800. Don't pay those prices. You can get it much cheaper. In the US, it sits around $400 or so. dollars. And I mentioned earlier that the clear competitor for this is the Electro Voice RE20. Now, I have listened to direct comparisons between the microphone, and honestly, I cannot tell the difference. If you put them in a blind test, I could not tell you which mic was which. So that didn't really factor into which mic I was going to buy. With that in mind, the two main reasons why I bought this microphone might sound dumb, but... 
for me, they're kind of important. The first reason is this mic is, at least in Australia, $100 cheaper. And if I'm going to be spending $580 on a microphone versus $680, that's not a major difference at that point. But if I can save a bit of extra money for what to me sounds like the exact same audio, I'm going to do so. At the end of the day, I'm going to be a cheapskate when I can be. I spent maybe six or seven months debating whether I want to buy this. The other reason is very subjective, but I personally think the RE20 is a very ugly microphone. Maybe you disagree with me, maybe you think it looks great. In my mind though, it's a great sounding microphone, and if I don't have to look at it, like if I was recording instruments, fine, great microphone. But having this in front of my face, I want to have a microphone that I actually like the look of, and I actually like being in my scene. There is a black variant of it, and I do think the black variant does look considerably better than the silver one, but I'm still not a big fan of it. There's one big question I have to answer, and that is, would I recommend this microphone? Now, there's one question I have to ask. Why are you asking that question? If you are just starting out on YouTube, you have like a couple hundred subs, no, do not buy a Shure SM7B. You do not need this. Nobody needs this microphone. This is a luxury purchase that you buy when you know that you're going to be doing this for a while, you have a stable income from your channel or whatever you're doing that you need audio gear for, that's when you consider a microphone like this. Now, if you are in that situation and you are looking for a really good microphone and you're looking for something you're gonna be basically keeping forever, Absolutely. The Shure SM7B is a fantastic microphone. I shouldn't need to say this. This microphone is great. There's a reason why, like, you know, Joe Rogan uses it, and basically every podcast out there, if they're not using Electro Voice, uses this microphone. It sounds fantastic. This is almost certainly going to be my regular desktop mic until it dies. That's not to say I won't buy other microphones. There are other use cases for microphones where this will not work. For example, a shotgun microphone if I want to record something, you know, at a far distance, or maybe a lavalier microphone, or maybe a microphone that is suitable for vlogging outside. I wouldn't want to, like, you know, carry around a shore and all the audio gear required to power it. That just wouldn't be viable. But for doing these recordings, or maybe if I get a standing desk and start walking around, I will be using the shore. If you're crazy enough to buy a Shure SM7B, I've got an Amazon affiliate link in the description down below. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribe, certainly BearPay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.